Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and again, I'm going to get this video out. And again, I'm going to be adding a little information. I will be adding a little information at the end concerning who is here. Now, what I was saying, Daniel 7, 25. For those of you, this is the third time I've been interrupted on this video because surrounding my apartment complex, in my apartment complex, is many people. Many people from the higher ups. Many people that are supposed to be here to protect us and my crime is sharing Jesus Christ and his words. So with that being said, my attention and my focus is on you right now because you know what people? You're weary. You feel oppressed. You're tired and discouraged. We are the children of the Most High God. David encouraged himself in the Lord. So with that, I'm going to, again, give this verse. Daniel 7.25 This is how it is now found written in our King James Version Bible. This is not how it originally was. This is one of the verses that has been changed by the portal machines when they go back in time. Daniel 7.25 says, And he shall speak, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time and times and the dividing of time. That's how it now appears. It's how it now appears in our King James Version Bible. But in actuality, because I remember growing it up, and I'm going to read it so I don't misquote it. And that's just it. If you have it in your memory, excuse me, if you have it in your memory, that will not be altered. It is supposed to say, Daniel 7.25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, with the M being capitalized, because God is the Most High. And shall try, try, and shall try to wear out the saints. He does not have power, and Christ in his spirit does not have power to wear you out, but he will try. And he shall try to wear out the Holy Ones, not the saints, the Holy Ones of the Most High, and seek. He will seek, not think, he will seek to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time and times in the dividing of time. Good morning, Angelina. The reason I am, I, I was praying, and I was praying last night, and I had been reading comments about how people feel so weary. I have moments of being weary. I had um, spoken to one lady that I was just feeling weary, a good friend, and she said, you're spiritually depleted, and you can be spiritually depleted, or you can be oppressed. Spiritual depleted is when you keep giving out and giving out and you're not having time to put the truth and back in. So if you're spiritually depleted, get back in this holy word. Fast, pray. Because when you empty out, you have to put it back in. But if the if you're being heavy hearted, weariness, if you are dealing with the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of oppression which a lot of our children are. Good morning, ladies. Jerry, Laura, Angelina, good morning. God bless. I want to speak for just a moment. Weariness can also be the spirit of oppression, the spirit of heaviness. We have power and authority over any spirit that would come against us. M many people are feeling weariness. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And just so you'll know, I've got the scriptures wrote down so that you will have them. In 1 Samuel 36, because I don't remember where they're exactly at, so I apologize for that. Good morning, Barbara and Teresa. It says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. 1 Samuel 36. That's an example for us. Matthew 11:28 says, God is not going to put on you more than you can bear. Uh, that's the verse I stand on. God is not going to put on you more than you can bear. This is why he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, who are burdened, heavy laden, and he will give you rest. So what that means, we don't have to be weary. When you feel that you're getting weary, it says do not be weary in well-doing. Do not be weary in well-doing. And we are fighting the good fight of, of, of faith. We are out to reach, to reach the lost. We are... We are warriors, and we are soldiers. So if you need to encourage yourself in the Lord, dig into the Word. 
there is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I live by that. I wear it with me. It's on my necklace. It's on my bracelet. It's on the ring I wear sometimes. And I only wear that ring because I'm married to Jesus. So, and that's a constant reminder. I can do all things. I can and I will do all things through Christ Jesus. It's through Him. It's nothing that we can do of our own. With that being said, you can also encourage yourself by Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct thy path. Then there's Joshua 1, 9. Psalms 23, 4. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Psalms 31, 24. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also you do comfort that also means encourage there I just wrote down some script Deuteronomy 31 8 Psalms 32 8 2nd Timothy 1 7 which is one of my favorite for God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power and love and of a sound mind because if you if you let weariness hang on too long if it is a spirit it's going to open up doors and when it opens up doors it's going to play havoc in your life Again, this is if this is a spirit of heaviness or oppression. And that is one of Satan's, one of his most favorite trip, tricks. Comes in slowly. There's Hebrews 21, 1 through 3. Zephaniah 3, 17. Romans 8, 3. Psalms 27, 1. And Luke 1, 37. Just examples of ways to encourage yourself in the Lord. With that being said, the Bible does talk about the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of oppression. Isaiah 61 3 we know this because it says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified we have got to we have got to take notice and, and take stock in our life and see why am I heavy? Why am I weary? I've not been reading. I've not been praying. Or, I have been reading. I have been praying. I have been fasting. I have been singing. What's going on? Then you know it's a spirit of oppression. It's a spirit of heaviness. Because if he can make you weary, so weary that at the end of the day you're so tired, you're so worn out, you crawl into the bed without praying first. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not lifting myself up. But there's times I'm so physically worn out but I will still get down on my knees before the Lord and I will pray and then sometimes it's just a little simple prayer and then sometimes I go into war it is the act of obedience and he will honor and give you strength because he is good he is good and he is faithful now for those it says in Galatians 6 9 is where it is found about being weary and well doing it says and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And we don't have to faint because our strength is from Him. And a lot of times when you, you find yourself weary and a lot of times when you find yourself being oppressed, you need to also realize and, and look at your life because you may not be leaving everything to Him. He says to, to not worry, to be, you know, do not be anxious, do not worry. Worry is a sin. So when you lay something before the Lord and you pray, you're to let Him take care of it then and not dwell with it on your mind over and over. Give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Give Him no room in your life. It is a spirit of oppression, which a lot of, them, a lot of it is. Oppression, weariness. That is a spirit you need to loose off of yourself. And you can do it yourself. Barbara, Barbie, it is a lie. It is a lie. Okay, the spirit of oppression, the spirit of heaviness, it needs to be loosed off of you first. And just say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I loose this spirit. But now then you're going to bind it and you're going to cast it away so it doesn't go on anybody else or try to come back to you. You get rid of them. Put them out of, out of the way. That's why you see me so often binding them and cast them into outer darkness. Or, or As long as they're bound by eternal chains, yes, you can even cast them on 
any Christ meeting table. I'd like to do that. We have no love between him and I or Satan because this is war. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. You've got to get on the mindset that the enemy is going to kill you if you don't fight. When you're fighting a battle, are you going to fight with a fly swatter while he has a sword? Are you going to try to do damage? Are you going to take that enemy down in the name of the Lord? Because if you don't take it down, he may leave you alone for a while. But what about those left behind that's left to contend with it? Do you realize that we are called in advance to tear down strongholds, principalities, to come against these things? We have the power now. When we're, we, the bride, are gone, they're not going to have what we have here because we the bride are learned we already know these things we have the Holy Spirit within us they will have some to some degree but there's still it's not going to be as many even here on the earth so tear down what you can now my prayers daily I come against principalities in the air powers of darkness not everything is just a demon. That And if you don't know how to pray, pray against the hierarchy, the levels of Satan's kingdom. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. Witchcraft has no power over a true child of God. You know, the, the thing about it is, for example, with this loosing and binding the spirit of heaviness, you loose that spirit off of you, spirit of oppression, of heaviness, then you bind that spirit. You bind them in everlasting chains. <clears throat> I forget where the verse is. There's a verse. I think it's in Revelation where it talks about everlasting chains. And you know, I generally, I like to pike them and take my sort of spirit and cut them up. But if you don't feel like you need to do that, just bind them and cast them into outer darkness or cast them somewhere. Cast them away. Then you come and you loose into your life. And this is what Matthew 18, 18 gives us authority. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So when you bind the Spirit, when you loose the Spirit off of you, heaven looses it. When you bind the Spirit and cast it away, heaven does that. When, it, when we do it here on earth. When you loose, come back and loose then what it means because we through Jesus have been reinstated our dominion when we accepted Jesus that Satan had originally taken. So we then can loose, in other words, ask God, that's what loosing means, ask God to loose according to John 15, 26 and Isaiah 61, 3, the garment of praise, oil of gladness, oil of Jesus, the garment of praise, comfort, and oil of the oil of joy. Blech. I'm trying. <laughs> So, you've got to use the Word. The Word. The Word is all-powerful. The Word is Jesus. When you realize Jesus is the Word, and that means Jesus is His body, His, His essence, Himself, is in the Word. Same as His blood. You are right, Miss Pam. She is right. Once you do that, once you loose the loose loose the spirit off of you, bind it, cast it away, you loose within you the you know, the comfort, the joy, you also shut any doors, any access. Anything if you've come into agreement with the spirit, say and this is just an example because I am fine and I'm healthy in Jesus' name. But I <coughs> oh, I'm getting a cold. Well, I have just come in agreement with that spirit of sickness. And by doing that, I have opened the door. And by doing that, Satan now has legal rights to come in and cause me to be sick. And whatever else, because I've invited him into my life. So in Jesus' name, can you hear me? Because it said something about the video freezing. Is the video froze? Or can, or can you see me? Because I'm telling you. There are people on, in my complex that do not want me speaking Jesus. But I will speak his name to the very end. Alright, thank you. 
all powers in the name of Jesus and I plead the blood over this live video over the internet the modem the router the Wi-Fi signal over everything in Jesus name thank you lady I appreciate that okay we have got to realize the authority that we have in Jesus it's not us it's in Jesus and through Jesus's sacrifice through the blood he shed that blood is all powerful that blood is all powerful the blood is part of your we your weaponry just as just as the name and many people don't want to believe that but when you understand that blood is alive and you study what real blood does it attacks sickness it, it build that it protects it does all these things well Jesus blood is all that and all powerful so that's why I plead the blood pleading is asking petition um, making it your request known to the Lord as we are allowed to do as children of God we are allowed to come boldly into his throne room in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So through that blood, they go together. Through that blood of Jesus, through his sacrifice, is how God was able to give him that name above all names. That Romans tells us, it's Philippians, I think, tells us about. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Yes, thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. So when you realize you have the blood of Jesus you have the name of Jesus you have the word of your testimony and you have the Holy Spirit we're not defeated Isaiah 59 19 tells us when the enemy comes in like a flood the Spirit of the Lord to raise up a standard the Spirit is the Holy Spirit within us when you get saved you have the Holy Spirit now some people will be baptized and then will be able to work in gifts there's a difference but it's still the same spirit and I did a study on that when the enemy comes in like a flood and the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard what that means is when this water is coming in and coming in and coming in the Holy Spirit raises up a standard in other words splits it right in half and directs the water to other places that's the power of our God that's the power of our God I understand Teresa. Teresa has to leave. And I didn't get to go to church today, but I'm having church anyway, so praise the Lord. <laughs> He's good in all things. I want to read you a few I want to give you a few scriptures to help you, to encourage you. First off, we know that the demons and the word now says devils, but it was demons before in KJV, that the demons believe and tremble. Okay, that's in James two nineteen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, that's in Isaiah 59, 19. And for those of you that need to encourage yourself, 1 John 4, 4, it will say in there, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that is in me, than he, Satan, and all his lackeys, that is in the world. When you get this, this is one thing the Lord taught me from the very beginning. When you can, you know, just categorize everything, realize it, people that are coming against you situations that are coming against you um, you know what whatever it all goes back to one enemy Satan and he's defeated he's already defeated Jesus defeated him when he allowed himself to be killed rose from the grave taking with him the keys to his own kingdom Satan don't even have the keys to his own kingdom it says he roars like a lion like a lion now he he comes to kill still and destroy if we allow him access but he roars like a lion we have the lion of Judah who roars and when he roars the whole earth shakes when I say I do not fear what man can do unto me I mean it but now I fear God with the holy reverent fear he is my daddy he is my Savior he is my God I love him but I have a healthy respect for what he can do and know and I honor him and I reverence him now there's another scripture Luke 10 19 and I'm, I wrote it out because I don't want to misquote it to you behold I give unto you unto you that know Jesus, that serving Jesus and living a pleasing life to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy 
and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now there are times when we are to be tested, like Job and the hedge let down, but even then Satan is restricted to what he can do. Now you can either trust the Lord, dig in, pray, and not open any more do and not open any doors during that trying. But when you are tried, and if you stay faithful to the end, not be weary in well doing, you're going to come out tried as gold purified seven times, silver purified seven times, or as gold, and be a usable vessel for him. That's awesome. I want to be used. And I don't care if he wants me cleaning toilets, if he wants me shouting off the rooftops, if he wants me speaking to presidents. I don't care. I just want to be used. I want to be a servant. It's not about a title. We're all the same body. We all have parts. And we all fit this body perfectly. As long as we stay in our calling. Meaning, if you're called to be a mother and not a missionary, but you want to be a missionary and you decide you're going to be a missionary and leave your kids, you've jumped out of your calling. But if you being a mother, you stay in that calling of mother, and you can do other things too, this is just an example, but you're raising that child or children in godly manner under the admonition of the Lord, teaching him the, them the word, that's a mighty calling of God. So don't don't set yourself on what somebody else is doing. Set yourself on what God what God wants you to do. I mean, for years, a lot of years, I was just simply I mean, I, I've worked prophetically a lot all my life, but a big part of my calling is intercession, praying. So pray, 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 pray. I can't stress that enough. And be obedient to how the Lord wants you to pray. I start many of my prayers by saying, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to pray? Lead me in Jesus' name. After I say, Father, I come in Jesus' name. And if you will yield yourself to Him, He will lead you. Okay, I wanted to also give you Ephesians six twelve. And this is, is the KJV. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, wickedness in higher places. This is Satan's hierarchy. Demons and all, you know, all that together. So if you're unable to remember all those, it's in Ephesians 6.12. Say his hierarchy or his government. Government structure, which we cover it all. We've got to get precise in a prayer. 2 Corinthians 10.4 For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for, for the pulling down of strongholds. So why I'm, why I'm stressing that? Have you prayed over your neighborhood? Have you prayed over your community? Have you prayed over your city or even your state to pull down the strongholds? And dedicate it to the Lord. That's what he's having me start doing. I mean I've done it before. But not like I am now. And you know the Lord says. It's not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. Saith the Lord. Again that's the Holy Spirit. That is um, Zechariah 4, six. And, and, and I know a lot of people. You hear me say. Um, we're not, I'm not the, the tail. I'm the head. That's scripture. That's scripture. And this is a heritage, this is a promise to us as children. Deuteronomy twenty eight thirteen. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded thee this day to observe and do to them. And there's many people that, that I've run into that says the Old Testament was, was for that day. And the New Testament is all we live by. That's incorrect. And the reason I say that is, what did Jesus have to teach by? The Old Testament. So, with that being said, 
again, I have seen many, many people saying that they're they're weary, they're weary, and I realize it is. A, and everybody, everybody I know that that's well, even those that are not really sold out, it's just an uh, an attack on each each side, attack, attack. You barely get done with one, and another comes. Another way to get through that: start praising the Lord, singing and worshiping. Many battles have been won through the Bible, through praising the Lord and praising the Lord and, and worshiping and singing you don't have to be a beautiful singer in the eyes of man it's the heart he says make a joyful noise unto the Lord I, we had a lady growing up her name was Ari she was an elderly lady could not carry a tune one bit Really, if you in the eyes of the world, I, they would say she was, she was quite awful. But to me, I love to hear her. When she opened her mouth, and this was in my teenage years, and sang, the spirit fell. And you could tell it was from her love from the Lord. So don't be shy to sing to the Lord. Don't be... Don't let people... Don't let people hinder you. From serving the Lord. Their words may be cruel. Yes. But look what they did to Jesus. They called him Beelzebub. The prince of devils. Jesus the son of God. So. We're in good company. If they persecuted him. They're going to persecute us. And he's looking over. Okay. As far as. um, I, I brought biblical scripture to you. For. For. Another scripture, a few more scriptures about heaviness to show you that it is in the Bible. And it is a spirit of oppression. Um, sometimes if you are depleted spiritually. Psalms 119.28 My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Now, sometimes your soul can be heavy due to like deaths and other things too. Just don't stay in it. Don't stay in it. Even David said in Psalm 56.3 what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So even he had moments of fear, but he didn't stay in it. It's when you stay in it, you fall into sin. And you allow the devil a stronghold. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of a sound mind. And perfect love casts out all fear. That's in First John. Okay, Proverbs 20, um, 12, 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. First Peter 1, 6. When ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. We're being tempted. We're being tested. Other verses, but, but here's the cure too. God promises us his, his, his peace. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Refocus. You getting weary? Refocus. Refocus. Refocus on Jesus and not the problems. Galatians 6, 9. And let us, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And there's Matthew 11, 28, 23. You see, it's all going back to the mind. The battlefield's in the mind. And we'll read one more. Isaiah, some of my favorite here. 40, 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, to the weary. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That is a promise. That is a promise. You know, I took, um, I've, I've quit looking in the Bible to see what the Lord can do for me now. I am now looking and seeing what I can do for Him. What will please you, Lord? What will please you? Okay, praise pleases Him. I'm going to praise. Prayer pleases Him. I'm going to pray. Helping the widows. 
I'm going to help the widows. Help the poor. I'm going to help the poor. These things bring him joy. These things bring him joy. But, one of the biggest things... Yes, Miss Pam. One of the biggest things I have found... Being obedient. When you become obedient to the Lord... First, it opens up doors and windows of opportunities for you. And change, it, it allows change. But when you are obedient to the Lord, and He begins trusting you, when He begins trusting you to do what He asks, that is an amazing thing. That is an amazing thing. To know that the King of all glory knows when He tells you something, he's, you're going to do it. It's very humbling. It's very humbling. I love him. He's my everything. So I, I encourage you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. If you're feeling weary. If you're feeling discouraged. If you're feeling faint of heart. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And if it's an oppressive heaviness. Loose it off of you in Jesus name. Bind that spirit. Spirits. They usually come in threes. <laughs> At least I found. And in Jesus' name, live victorious. We're not called to be living a barely. We're called to thrive. We're called to thrive in Jesus. We're called to be the light. We're called to be full of His joy. Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You know, renew a right spirit. And I misquoted that. I apologize. So we know, we can look, when we see these things too in the word. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That tells you, you can lose your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's part of your strength. So there's things that Satan targets in you. So what I would, what I'm recommending, and you pray about it. Don't take my word. You take everything that I've said to the Lord, and let Him confirm or deny it to you. Take it to His word. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is our strength. Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? Okay, Isaiah 41.10. Apparently he wants me to read this. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. So when all these things come, don't be overwhelmed. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What a God. What a God. The God who created all the heavens. Bends his ear down. <coughs> Excuse me. Bends his ear down. To hear you. To hear you. There's many times I have said, Lord, I am one in billions of people. A pinprick among people. And yet you hear me. You speak with me. You love me. I'm amazed by our God. I am amazed. But let, I want you to know, I am praying for all of you. Every person that has, well actually I pray over even the Burning Bride Ministry. <coughs> Excuse me. And I pray over the members here. I pray over the people I've met on Facebook, Telegram, even on Jump. I just pray for everybody. <laughs> I like to pray. 
Because there's power. Power in prayer. None of us are defenseless. None of us are defeated. We all have the same Jesus. We all have the same power. None of us are above the other. We're all equal. We're all equal. And I know, I know at times it is, it, well, it used to be hard to be obedient. But here's what I learned to say. Instead of saying it was, it's hard to, hard to be obedient. I say, Lord, it's going to be easy to be obedient because you're going to help me. I'm going to go into one more thing. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Now that's in Proverbs, I believe, 34. don't remember the exact verse and I apologize for that. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. I can't remember exactly how it goes. <clears throat> but what it means, what you speak, you're speaking into existence. If you speak, for example, and this is just an example because I do not receive this anyway. My mother had cancer. My father had cancer. I'm going to get cancer. You have just spoke that curse into your life. Even like the example with um, a cough. Oh, I, I, I've got a cough. I'm getting a cold. Not only have I agreed with Satan, I have spoke death into my life. Or even just a casual remark when you're laughing and say, Oh, you're going to be the death of me. You're speaking death. You're speaking death. Idle words. Idle words have power. In the other way, you can turn things around. If I find myself saying something negative, and I thank the Lord He's helped me do this, like, Lord, I don't think I can do anything. I, I don't think I can go on. All of a sudden, I will go, but your word says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Return that. Change that. Refocus it. If you catch yourself speaking doubt to yourself or, or to anybody else, change it. Apply the word to it. Flip it. And one thing we can do, again, I'm going to bring you to Isaiah 54, 17. I'm going to read the whole verse this time. Excuse me. Got my trusty Bible here. One of them. is <laughs> all its study notes. I've got to go through several pages. Isaiah 54, 17. I mean 57. Hold on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. It means they're going to be formed, but they don't have to prosper unless you allow them to. For and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the, the Lord. So it's nothing that we do, it's all through the Lord. Okay, when you talk about tongue, that is in reference to spoken. And spoken words can be even written words. So every tongue, every word, every person that speaks against you or you yourself, that shall rise against thee, even if you do it yourself, in judgment, judging you as in, that judgment can mean many things, but judgment as in, I'm judging this, that I'm going to be sick. Thou shalt condemn. Okay, so if you see that, if you realize that you have spoken over your life negativity, as you might say, for example, the my mom had cancer, my dad had cancer, I'm going to get cancer. Condemn it. What I do when I realize this verse, I say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, any words that I have spoken over my life throughout my whole life that have been negative, that have not, that have been death and not life, that has been against your will. I condemn it. I crush it. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. And I replace it with your life. With your life. Life of the word. With your word, Father, in Jesus' name. So when you're talking about death and life is in the power of the tongue, this goes with it. This can also go when somebody tries to send a curse on you. And if you're a child of God living right, they have no effect. <laughs> it's just like, really? You're going to do that again? Nope, in Jesus' name. You can't let these things fear you. They have no real power on a true child of God unless you let them have the power. You realize that? 
Satan has no power unless you let him have power. Now, if you're being tried, the Lord is with you. See, we are covered under the blood of Jesus. We are covered under the shadow of his wings. When we get saved, we are born again. But, it says a just man falls seven times, but gets back up. There, 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 during our walk, there will be times when we may fall. Step out from under that covering. We're then open to Satan's attack. But there comes a time in your walk that he can keep you from falling. He can keep you from falling regardless if you'll listen to him. That's what it comes down to. If you'll be obedient and listen, you don't have to fall. But it says in Jude, I think it's Jude 25, there's only one chapter in Jude. It talks above there about him. If you keep yourself, in other words, if you read, you pray, you seek the Lord, if you fast, if you sing, if you praise, if you let the Holy Spirit lead, if you do what the Bible says strictly, that's basically, if you do what the Bible says, then he is able to keep you from falling. You're right, Lorraine. You have to consent. And, and a lot of times you can do that unknowingly without even realizing. I spend, I go through my day almost every hour just because I know the enemy is sly and you know his tactics. You know, he, he's the master deceiver. He's the liar. You know, all these things. I go through and I say, Father God, if I have unknowingly come into agreement with any demonic spirit, any evil, any evil thing in any entity, any anything evil in any way, I repent right now. I ask you, wash me again in the blood, Jesus, and I ask that um, all windows and, and 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 I shut all windows and doors and windows of opportunity, any any window door access to my life, and I renounce any legal rights Satan will try to lay hold on me in Jesus' name. So, I will say one thing too, when when I am praying and loosing a sickness off somebody. And then binding that devil. I will go back and apply the blood of Jesus to that wound. That spot. And ask him to remove any residue. Because Satan is sly. But greater is he that is innocent. He that is in the world. Okay. Now again I apologize for being interrupted so rudely by these people here. I will not name who they are. But I will say they are in our upper authority. And if they keep on I'm going to unload who they are. I have names, badges, everything. So there you go. It's all in God's timing. If it's to come out, He will do it. And the reason I have the information, I've set my face before the Lord and I asked Him for it. And He was very plentiful in the information. So if you could please remember us here at My Lovely Jesus Ministry. Again, this is our ministry, it is Jesus' ministry. I'm just the face that he put to it. Uh, I'm glad, Stephanie. If eh, that's just it, when when the Lord called me to step out, I had two. Re well, I had three requests. Oh, well, I had two requests, and then I said, "Protect my family," and he has. And have people pray for me. And then I told him, if we reached one person, then it's all worth it. So if this helped in anybody in any way, I am grateful. I, I prayed when the Lord put it on my heart to, to do this. I went to look in the scriptures. I again went down on my knees praying. I asked the Holy Spirit to take over. So, thank you, Lord. I give him all praise. He is good. He is God. And remember, again, my eyes just fell on my scripture again. And this is the one I misquote all the time, so I don't quote it. I usually just refer to it. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. This is his word. It will accomplish everything it set out to do, if you follow the instructions. So remember... You're not the tail, you're the head. And as I said before, if you've been fighting and you feel defeated, straighten your crown, shake off the dust, and remember to who you belong to. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our soon-coming King. 
I cannot stress that enough. I know other people have their own opinion, but I'm taking my opinion from him. And he said, soon, my love, very soon, very, very, very soon. So be encouraged, but let's reach all we can. Let's reach all we can. I don't want anybody to go to hell. And I'm going to say this one more time. With this horrible things that are coming on our world and all the things I've seen, it's not as horrible as hell. So let's reach for them lost. Even your enemies. Pray for your enemies that they get saved. You know, I have enemies that I didn't ask to be my enemies, and I don't consider anybody my enemy. I just pray for them that they receive Jesus. They made them my enemies. So I just lay them before the Lord. Here they are, Lord. You know, I'm not going to get my mind on them and off of you. Here they are. You see what they've done. You know, you take care of it. Vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord. I will recompense. I will recompense. Leave it in the Lord's hands. Leave it all in the Lord's hands. And don't pick it back up. Lay it on the altar. And let him have it. Let him have it. Now sometimes your prayers can be hindered. We know that from Daniel. I believe it's 9. No, no, no. It's not Daniel 9. Maybe it is. I've been, I've been in Daniel so much right now. I'm just... <laughs> it's all kind of <laughs> but where Gabriel comes to him and his prayers have been hindered for 21 days answer was sent immediately that right there tells us principality so if you're having a prayer that's hindered and your life is lining up with the word of God first I would ask the Lord search my heart see if there's anything in my life that's causing a delay and if there's not start binding any principalities or any hindrances from Satan because the Lord allows us sometimes to see if you're going to remain on your knees. Or are you going to persevere? Or are you going to give up and walk away? What would have happened if Daniel had walked away? Look at the revelation the Lord gave him. <laughs> Daniel is one of my favorites too. You know, my favorite book, even when I was five years old, and I guess people call me weird, was Revelation. And I understand it now because what the Lord has led me to. And Daniel, I love Daniel, but, but when it came to the statue and all that, I was like, Lord, I don't get this, but I'm going to read it. But, <laughs> but now it's like, whoa, understand it. Yes, the word is amazing. And the Lord tells me it's not stories, it's lessons. And if you look up the definition of lessons and stories, you'll understand that. Stories is given to entertain. Lessons are given to teach you. With that, I'm going to say, sign off here. I've been on here for 47 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I guess I had much to say. But stay under the blood. For those of you that still don't understand what that means, you can walk out from under that blood covering. So repent often. Stay in His Word. And if you have stepped out, you go back under that covering when you repent. But if you're living a godly life, you stay under that blood. Stay under that covering. Stay under the shadow of His wing. Stay close to him. It's going to get very, very rough. But we are holding to his right hand. I appreciate all the prayers. Thank you. So God bless from Tennessee. Stay under the blood. No, you're not defeated. You don't have to be defeated. You're not the tell. You're the head. You're more than a conqueror by the word of your testimony. It's not by might. But by not by power, but by the Spirit, said the Lord. We've got we've got all we need. Smack your armor on every day. Smack. That's not a good word. I keep my armor on. Some people say they put it on every day. I keep mine on, but I just reaffirm it. In other words, Lord, if anything's off, and I add the cloak of zeal and the cloak of righteousness, ask the Lord to throw that on too, because He does. Well, Alabama's not too far away from me, Stephanie. All right. God bless. Stay under the blood. I'm going to sign off here. I've got some things i got to do for the Lord and, and even actual life, you know. <laughs> i got to do laundry. I don't usually do anything on Sunday, but I have to do it today because my son has to go to work and he just now told me he needed clothes. So I'm praying over that. And let the Lord bless it and all that I do. Thank you, Mr. Ham. Thank you. I know where Decatur is too. I know where that is. All right, and from California, just praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. We have reached so many people. And it's all about reaching souls. This is not just for the lost. This is to connect Christians with one with another. From Canada. Praise the Lord. In Africa. Praise God. But I will say this. On this site. Anybody is welcome. We pray over every person. That's why if you were wondering why you were not approved right away to get in. We pray over every person. And if the Lord says no, we decline it. If he says yes, then you're, you're welcome in here. But if upon entering you try to cause discord or division, we will give a warning. Unless the Lord says otherwise, you know, and you're booted down immediately. That will be general for everybody because we will not point anybody out unless the Lord says so. And if you continue to cause discord, because discord is of Satan, you will be thrown out without a second thought. Because this place is the Lord's and it's dedicated to Him. Just so you will understand the process. And then any donation sent in, it is prayed over. And um, a lot of it has been used to help people. And a lot of it has been in preparation for what's coming. And being sent to places that God has already declared and shown will be safe areas just so you'll know that's where a lot of, where it is where but we are praying over everything so with that being said again I just feel like I need to say that I thank you Lord for these people Lord I ask that you bless every person that hears this that sees this that you know that that your will would be done that you would stir up in them a fresh fresh anointing that you ignite a fire and a passion for you, Lord. A passion for you like you have for them. And Father, I ask that you would bless their hands and their feet. Wherever they go, they take the territory for you. Lord, those that are pressed in Jesus' name, I come against the spirit of impression. I loose it off of them in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of oppression and heaviness that's been loosed. I wrap you in everlasting chains dipped in the blood of Jesus. I break your jaws and your teeth. I pike you. I crush your head. I decapitate you and I throw you on Satan's altar in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I loose upon each in Jesus' name the oil of joy. I loose upon them the spirit of gladness and comfort. And Lord, I ask that you move and do whatever needs to be done in Jesus' name for each person in their situation. And Lord, I also ask that you will lead them to shut these doors. I can shut them, but they have to shut them. And Lord, I'm asking once they're shut, you put God locks on them, Lord, so these doors cannot come open again. And seal them in the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Oh, donations can be made through... Um, we have a PayPal or by check. Um, I'm praying about PayPal because I know what's been going on. But, um, but And that link is actually on the Facebook site and on the website. The MyLovelyJesusMinistry.com website. And um, we also sometimes take donations for Pastor Imran. And we see that it gets to him. So anything that is sent to him, he's the, the preacher in Pakistan with the the um, schools, the Jehovah Bible schools. And for those that don't understand why we support, besides being a Christian school, my understanding from talking to him, the, the Muslim schools will not allow Christian children in to learn. So he opened the one school and now he has a second. And it's through um, donations like what we've been giving him that they've been able to supply material for the kids as well, and also food and clothing shoes simple things like that so um and the lord has laid it on my heart i knew him even in burning bride ministry and and um i've prayed with him many times he'll call from pakistan and we'll pray over situations but even in that you pray about anything you do but if you send any kind of donation, please make a note on it or it will go into ministry fund. Or if you send it, like one lady, she forgot to put it was for Pastor Emron, but she sent me a, a text and told me it was for him. And I was able to locate it and make sure it went to him. Okay, with that being said, again, I'm trying to end this. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. With that being said, though, stay under the blood. I love you and I pray for you. But Jesus loves you more. And what better word can I leave you with?
God bless.